it's over. It's really over. The series finale of Power Book 2 Ghost has just happened. Let's talk about it. Yo, 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 it's SP the Ghost. What's happening? It's your boy Screen 9. It's your girl Rapunzel. This is Anthony Fleming the third. Roll up and check out the Wrong Agenda. The wrong Agenda Podcast. The Wrong Agenda Podcast. The Wrong Agenda Podcast. This is the Wrong Agenda Podcast. All right, so before we get started, this review is going to have spoilers. So if you didn't see the episode yet, get your head checked. Go watch it. Come back and discuss. So this episode starts out with Tariq and his crew trying to deal with Detective Carter and the Tejadas trying to take care of their normal problem. The beginning of this episode goes basically exactly how you expect. Detective Carter threatens Tariq with the evidence from the safe house of him killing the nude. Tariq sends Effie and Brady to go to Detective Carter's house and he erase everything off to his computer, of course. I feel like Effie's hacking abilities are a bit overpowered. I mean, I know it's a show and they need someone to do techie stuff. And every time something comes about, she can just literally do almost anything. But then again, criminals are probably the biggest tech geniuses that I know. Did I say that I know? I don't know any criminal tech genius. I'm just saying criminals do techie stuff. It's good for the show. It's good. It progresses the show. I I'll allow it. During this raid on Carter's home, they discovered that he was probably the one that killed Detective Tate. And they were going to use this against him for a sort of mutual bribery type of thing. It was a shaky plan, but I'm glad they did it because this led to one of maybe, I would say my third favorite scene in this episode. This episode is actually pretty well done and pretty good. I liked a lot about it, but yeah, Michael versus Michael, Michael Ely versus Michael Rainey, chair to chair, face to face. It was an intense scene where they both threw shots back at each other and their families and things like that. And I think this was an amazing scene. It wasn't a violent scene. It didn't have anything, any bells and whistles. It was just two guys acting and they both did a great job. I really liked that scene a lot. That is my third favorite scene of this episode. On to the Tejadas. Of course, they're trying to take out Noma at any cost. And I must admit, in the beginning of this show, like when it first started in the first season, I didn't really like Kane's character too much. I thought he was just a generic thug character oh let me kill things blah 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 we had so many of them he didn't really stand out to me but by now at this point I think they really gave him a lot more range and layers and I'm really starting to like him and it's sad that this show is about to end and he really just grew on me so the Tejadas get together they're three men three two men and a woman family and their extended family which features little dirt they go in the raid one of Noma's spots and they just massacre everyone basically they shoot up everyone and they wind up kidnapping her daughter the fact that the Tejadas I don't know if they spend a lot of time in a shooting range or whatever but they are like expert marksmen at this point and they completely demolish Noma's security that's guarding her daughter which to me is another one of those things like okay it's a show but all of that security all of those shots fired off and these are people just running and gunning and none of them got hit uh, Noma security sucks. They really suck. Let's be honest, they suck. A square with a Uzi probably would have hit more than them. And I must say, Drew's character is shaping up to be a lot more than he was in the beginning. I'm glad they started to give him just more of a limelight role. I did a dope interview with Lavelle Adams Gray, who's the actor who plays Drew. I'll post it up somewhere. You can check it out or it'll be in the links or something. But um, definitely check that out. Cool guy, man. Did some great acting here on in this episode and the other episodes, but yeah, definitely check that out. Shameless plug. Of course, the Tariq gang and the Kane gang eventually all had to get together and develop some plans and plots and schemes as they always do. One to get rid of Carter, the other to get rid of Noma. Being how they had Noma's daughter kidnapped, but Tariq has, you know, a rapport with her. He devises a plan to get Noma's location from her by acting like he's saving her and having a weird conversation about parents with her in the car. And it works. It leads them straight to Noma and as she's going to speak to her mother and they have a clear shot at Noma, Diana decides to shoot her daughter, which, of course, pisses Kane off because he wanted to get Noma. And now her bodyguards are shooting these hundreds of rounds that they don't hit anything anyway. So I don't know why they just didn't kill Noma at that time, because her, her security again sucks. But yeah, Diana shoots the daughter in front of her mom. And I don't like a lot of things that Diana does all throughout this show. I don't really like a lot of things that she did. A lot of her decisions, her character kind of irked me a lot. But I'm, I'm on board for this one. I'm on board for this one. 
Her doing this to me was amazing. And this was my second favorite scene in this episode because it was just such a real revenge filled, ruthless, I don't give a crap move. And yo, good, good one, Diane. That was good. I, I like that. That made me like her character actually a little more because, yo, that rage is real, man. Everybody being so level headed and oh, sticking to the mission stuff. If you've ever been in any type of situation, sticking to the mission is way harder than you think it is. And that was a, a crazy real reaction. And I, I applaud that move. It was good. It was a good one. Tariq then doesn't think that his mutual blackmail plan on Detective Carter is going to work. I got dirt on you. You got dirt on me. And he feels he still needs to get rid of him. So he gets Drew to make a setup so he can basically take Carter off the map after Drew erases all the data from Carter's computer that incriminates Tariq. Now, this plan was call Carter's second in command set Carter up to come to a meet, double cross him at the meet and get him to confess his crime and admit to be able to throw his second in command under the bus to save his own ass. Now, throughout this show, they tried to portray Carter as this intelligent, uh, ruthless, crooked cop that plans and schemes, but he fell for one of the oldest television movie scooby-doo tricks that i've ever seen sit there and confess your crimes and admit that you're gonna set someone up in front of a kid in a warehouse somewhere that you didn't put the like come on oh my god that to me could have just been fleshed out way better man like like he should already go in there expecting that this place is wired rigged set up cameras something something like this is the thing you do you're a crooked cop these guys are big time criminals. Did he underestimate them that much? Was he that just hungry to get this over with? It was just a little ridiculous to me that he fell so easy, but I guess they needed him to get off the table and tied. This really should have been a longer episode and this could have played out a little better to me, but it is what it is. Carter's then arrested by Nico, wrap it up and that cut it is gone. Seal it, put it in a bag, mail it away, whatever you want to do. He's gone. Then we get to the real meat and potatoes of the episode. Kane sets up Noma for the kill. He's waiting in the airport hangar with Diana and Drew, and they're waiting for Noma to show up so they could end this, put the final bullet in her. Noma's BS security and brother, cousin, forgot what this guy is, basically just turn her back on her and say, look, we're tired of fighting with the Tejadas. We are out of here. If you're not coming, you're on your own. So she takes this opportunity to become basically a snitch, and she gets the police to go. I guess, save her ass, get rid of the Tejadas at any cost. But it doesn't go exactly as she plans. I really thought this scene was going to go with the Tariq crew showing up and ambushing them on the ambush and getting them out of there and then the whole thing happening. But they didn't go that route. And I'm happy they didn't because that would have just been predictable and cheesy. Instead, when the police show up, Kane says, turn you guys selves in to Diana and Drew. And he says he's going to finish it. And I'm thinking at this moment, what is he really going to do? Is he going to hide? Is he just going to pop out and shoot Noma? Like, this is ridiculous. There's like 20 cops who just showed up. And of course, they're starting to arrest Diana and Drew. And for some reason, Noma is standing out in the front while police are coming to arrest people, which, all right, once again, TV show. Kane pops out of nowhere like uh, Batman. And he basically has a little dialogue with Noma while pointing a gun at her and manages to shoot her in the head in front of like a whole squad of police. How, what she's supposed to be a witness and they just let her. Okay. TV show. Get it. Even with me ragging on the scene that much, this is probably my favorite scene of the whole episode because you don't always watch TV for the realism, right? Sometimes you watch it just to say, wow, that happened. That was a great scene. And that was one of those scenes. It was an epic scene for Kane. People might meme that. And Noma's death was like, whoa, like, you know, it was shocking. Of course, the police get some shots off and they're much better marksmen than Noma's security because Kane gets hit a few times. But in true back Kane fashion, <laughs> he disappears there's little blood on the ground and no one knows where he vanishes they don't even chase him i don't know i don't get it it means it's batman batman i guess the show wraps up with Tariq basically becoming the new big kingpin and eventually someone actually calls him ghost 
That's it. They said it. The line. He's ghost. Ah, this is what we all been waiting for. Tariq is ghost. Oh, power book two ghost. My blow. Ah, oh, they said it. All right. All right. I'm bugging. <laughs> anyway, Tariq is set up as ghost. You know, they have a few scenes to wrap everything up. Show what's going on. How he's going to continue the drug business. Effie, Brayden, his mom. They show what's happening with Kane. He's basically going to take off on a run somewhere. I hope we get a spinoff power book, um, Nicaragua or Bahamas or something where he's in another country doing things. I'll be here to watch more Kane, maybe like a season or a few episodes or something. Maybe they'll do something cool with that. I hope so. Overall, the episode was pretty great to me. Series finale. I'm going to put it up there. Uh, I don't like to do this, but if I had to compare it to the series finale of uh, the original power, hmm. It's close. It's close. And that's that's saying a lot because I like I like the original one. So they were both really good. They left a lot open for there to be more going on in the story. Do I want to see more from Tariq at this point? I actually do. I was sad that it was ending here, but I'm pretty sure as of this time, the episode just came out. I don't know any insider information as much stuff that I had. And I refrained from talking about power because of things that I didn't know. I don't know anything here, but I'm just saying as of right now, there's nothing going on. But don't be surprised. If there is an announcement soon that there's something else coming. And I'm not talking about origins where they're going to tell about Breeze, Tommy and Ghost. Right. That was announced. Well, I didn't say what it's about, but origins, which I assume that's what it's about. But don't be surprised if they announce something forwarding the character from here. Diana is basically going to become Monet. We see uh, Tariq is Ghost. Brayden is not quite Tommy, but... We'll see where this goes. And they dropped a little Marvel moment here with the after credit scene. After credit scene has Tariq talking to a mysterious person on the phone and they're asking for his help. And he's saying he's going to come over there and help after all, because they are always family. Now, this we know there's another season of Tommy show. We also did a dope interview with one of the cast members there. You can check that out, too. Boom, boom, boom. Shameless plug. We're pretty much made to assume that it's Tommy calling Tariq for help because he says it's always family. Like, who else is his family? But just for the sake of conversation, I'm going to leave with this tidbit. What if it's not Tommy? What if it's actually Proctor's daughter? What's her name? Elisa Marie. What if it's actually Proctor's daughter? He kind of considers her family a little bit. They had a relationship. What if Proctor's daughter is coming? Maybe she's trying to finally get her revenge on Tommy for real or something else is going on. It'll lead Tariq somewhere else to further his story later on and that would be pretty cool just food for thought not saying it's a thing it's just you know come on the tommy thing is too obvious and wants everybody to do that so they're gonna zig we gotta zag but um that's all i gotta say about that i enjoyed the run of power every single episode of power from the original power to here i have watched it's been a great ride 10 years i really hope this ain't the end I would love to continue watching the show and get some more dope interviews from the cast. You guys, like, let's set that up and um, tell me what you think down in the comments. Who do you think it was that called Tariq? What did you think of the episode? Do you think things are going to continue? Let me know and um, hit the like on your way out, man. Check out some of my, my interviews and other videos and reviews and stuff. I, I review a lot of things. Tell me what you want me to review. Yeah, do it. Go ahead. Now, now.